Hey, you'll be Steve from that old Yorkshire geek, and it's time for me to review um, The Last of Us, Season 1, Episode 2. Uh, and they've got titles, which I didn't realise last week, but this episode's called Infected. Episode 1 was called When You're Lost in the Darkness, uh, but this one's called Infected. Uh, and it was directed by you know, Neil Druckmann, uh, along with Craig Mazin, well, you know, the the main people behind the game, uh, although some might argue that um, is it Amy Hennig uh, was the, the the real person who came up with the idea for the game, but uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm probably wrong. So let's have a look at this episode. It was really good, really enjoyed it. I actually thought it was better than the, uh, the, the pilot episode. Uh, really tense and exciting and had amazing locations, you know, and special effects, whatever they did, I don't know, map paintings, if there were, I don't know, CG uh, environments, it looked really good anyway, but we're going to look at it, and um, so let's just get on with it, shall we, uh, if we can find it, uh, this first part, I had to kind of get the video and um, edit it, because there's some nudity in it, which surprised me, but uh, let's get it on and have a look, here we go, so we start off with the... Uh, the HBO logo, obviously. And we go, we cut to um, uh, Indonesia, of all places. I don't know why it's Indonesia, but it just is. Uh, I was thinking, are they having a little dig at the Chinese, you know, for the COVID and all that, but not making it China, making it Indonesia, uh, you know, which is in the Far East. Uh, but anyway, we're, at, uh, we're in Indonesia. Is it Jakarta? I can't remember. It might be. It, it probably said. We'll probably get a... Uh... There we go. Yes, it is Jakarta, Indonesia. Oh, you can't see for my fat head. Hang on. There you go. Jakarta. Oh, you can't see for that. Either. Never mind. Jakarta, Indonesia, September 24th, 2003. So we're 20 years ago. This is when the uh, the epidemic or whatever, it is, the outbreak began. And uh, some uh, police officers, or the militia, I don't know what they have in uh, Indonesia, uh, they're going to this uh, cafe and um, they find this woman that's uh, eating uh, there. Uh, she's eating her lunch or whatever, and the this police come in and they uh, come and take her away. She thinks she's in trouble. Anyway, they come and take her away, drive her off in a car. She asks, is she, is she in trouble? Has she done something wrong? They say, no, they're taking her somewhere because she's a a microbiologist sort of person. Um, it's all it's all in uh, Indonesian uh, with subtitles, this part. Uh, and it's actually quite gripping, I must admit. Yeah, it's really well made. There we go, Professor of Mycology, that's what she is. Obviously deals with germs and stuff like that. Uh, so they're taking her to whatever this place is. Is it the University of the Hospital? I can't remember. And uh, they take her to have a look at a sample under a microscope. There you go. Would you please examine the prepared specimen? So she has a look and she says, this is Ophia cordyceps. Cordyceps, remember, is you know the the fungus that causes all the trouble. Uh, so why did you use that to prepare the slides? And they said, because it can come from a human. That's why. So she thinks, oh dear. So then they go, they see, cordyceps cannot survive in humans. And then he sort of like has a look on his face. There we go. And as though to say, it can now. So anyway, so they take her to see her body. Uh, she's in a, you know, a suit, so she doesn't get to... Uh, the fungus slash germs on her. And she goes into this, uh, there's a dead body in there, and it's of a, a woman. Um, I say, if you, if you feel sick, come out straight away. Uh, but there's a, a body of a woman. I've had to cover up the salient parts with a clicker head. <laughs> so, just letting you know, because as I say, she's nude. There you go. So, she does an examination. Um, uh, she checks she's got a bite wound on her, her ankle as we will see in a moment 
Uh, she's been shot, by the way. You see, bullet hole in her head. Uh, she's been shot dead. There you go, checking the bottom of her left leg. She's got a bite wound. And uh, as we'll see. Yeah. Uh, and it's obviously a human, a human bite. So somebody's bitten her. Um, so she has a look. She examines that. And then she... Uh, she has a look in the woman's mouth. She must see something in the moment. This is where she's asking you, is this a bite from a human? Uh, it says, yes, it is. So, and she checks in her mouth. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a cool scene. I don't know if it's a fake head. If it's a fake head, it looks very real. Or is it just a woman? Is she a sword swallower or something? I don't know. Or is it just a special effect that's one of these invisible special effects? She opens her mouth and she puts her tongues deep down inside, as we'll see here. Let's see if we can play it. And they go all the way in. Is it a fake head or are the trick tongues or is it just CG? I don't know. But she goes in and she pulls out um, uh, some of the, uh, you know, like these tendrils, these fungusy tendrils. So she pulls them out and it's like they, they reach out to her. And she freaks out. Ah, drops it and runs out. You know, she's had enough. So it leaves her on the slab. So that's the end of that one. Um, I can go to the, the rest of the episode now. <laughs> uh, right, so the next scene. Where are we? There we are. Uh, she's in a little yellow room. It's very yellow, isn't it? <laughs> um, and the uh, the policeman, or whatever he is, soldier, brings her a cup of tea. And uh, he asks what uh, what they can do. Uh, there we go. Oh, he describes what happened. Uh, she was just up, she was at work in a factory. There you go. And she just became violent all of a sudden and, you know, bit several people. Uh, they locked her in the bathroom, called the police. The police came, she tried to attack the police, so they shot her. As it says here. And they shot her. So, and then uh, she asks, what, well, what about the other people that were beaten? Uh, they were taken to a hospital, and then they became violent, so they had no choice but to execute them. And he uses those words. It became necessary to come to procedure. To execute them, so those people were killed, but they never found the person that actually bit her in the first place. So she asks that, um, and he's saying we need a vaccine, and she's saying there is no vaccine for this uh, because it's you know it's not a it's not a disease as such, is it? It's an infestation. It's a fungus that takes over, so it's not a disease that can be killed. But is there a way to kill the fungus? I don't know, but. But she says, there is no vaccine. And she said, he says, well, what should we do? And she suggests they bomb the city. There you go, she says, bomb it. And I, was, I actually got a little bit emotional watching this, watching because she's a really good actress, this this lady. Um, bomb this city and everyone in it. And then she says, and she obviously knows, including me and my family and everybody, and him. And so she gets all upset. And... Um, she says she asks for somebody to drive her home so she can be with her family. Uh, and that's when the credits come on, I do believe. Um, so that's, there we go, I would like to be with my family. And then the credits come on with the the music when it's ready. Here we go, all right. After the credits, for some reason, the credits didn't show, did they? For some reason, I don't know. There we go, the last of us. <laughs> um, and then we cut to present day, 2023 Boston, the height of the... The, the epidemic, the outbreak. And we see uh, Bella Ramsey as, um, um, oh, what's her name now? Ellie, uh, fast asleep. Uh, and we see a butterfly flies past her. Uh, do we see it? Uh, or is it? Have I missed it? Have I gone too far? As we see, uh, she's asleep on the nice, you know, nice mossy area. And the butterfly comes and oh, flies over her. Uh, I don't know if that's supposed to be significant. It means that she's at peace and it's all lovely. But then she wakes up and uh, back to hell on earth. 
Uh, she sees Joel and Tess staring at her. Uh, they don't trust her. They think, you know, she's infected. She could turn at any minute. But uh, Joel wants to kill her. He wants to shoot her. I'm done with it. But Tess says, no, she's she's important. She, she hasn't turned. She's been infected for weeks. You know, she's obviously important. She's not infected. And they have to check her arm. So she shows him her arm in a moment. Um... So she's seriously not getting ill. She's not turning, is she, into a, an infected person. Um, oh, it's Joel checks, looks at his hand. He's, uh, he's got a hairline fracture. Remember the last episode, he beat that uh, security guard, soldier person. Beat him, presumably, to death with his bare hands. Uh, so he's paying the price for that now, uh, which is good. Which is not good. I mean, it's a, a nice touch, you know, that... They're not. They're not uh, imper in, 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 impregnable, impervious to injuries. You can see that uh, Tess is still uh, still got her scars from her, her um, encounter with I forgot his name. Is it Robert and his goons? Uh, but she's looking a little bit more like uh, now. How we know? Um, um, I forgot her name now. Anna. Anna. Oh, I forgot her name. <sighs> <laughs> Anatov, there, it's looking a bit like, more like the Anatov we knew from Fringe. But um, anyway, so they're talking about um, um, Ellie, you know, and um, he wants to shoot her, she wants them to, to, you know, to take to the, uh, wherever they're supposed to be going. Um, Ellie's been for a, a wee, I presume, she means to the toilet. She's coming back and she could hear them talking. She knew what they were saying. Um, so they're having something to eat. She's got a sandwich. They're eating um, um, beef jerky or some sort of jerky. Uh, but she's been all, you know, foul mouth. A particularly foul mouthed episode. There's a lot of effing and blinding in this episode, it's more than last week. Um, but uh, hey, there's Anatov. They're looking a bit more like uh, the Anatov from Fringe. Not obviously not as glamorous as, <laughs> as she was then, but uh, looking a bit a face in, as swollen as it was last week. Uh, so he's, she's asking um, Ellie, you know, what's so special about her? And she says, you know, um, I forgot her name as well. Now <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, Marlene, that's it, Marlene. Marlene told her not to tell anybody. She says, here I am telling the first people I've, I've met since. So she tells them that um, they have to take her to, she's going to a, a place out west where there's some doctors, a firefly camp where there's doctors and they can sort out a vaccine. And Joel says, oh, we've heard all this before. This is all nonsense. Uh, but they still decide to go. They're going to take her. Uh, if they can, so they're gonna head out into Boston now. Here we go. Here we see, uh, and a really, really good. Um, I say CG environments or matte paintings. Oh, however they've done it, I presume it's done in a computer. Everything's done in a computer these days. But it looks really good, uh, as you can see. Their building that's toppled. So they head out. Oh, there you go. See, I'm trying to. Trying to get a good shot of it. We saw some see some birds flying by, or we did we did a minute ago. See, I've gone too far again, bloody hell. <laughs> Here we go. There you go. You see a building there. Some birds flying by, just as a little, you know, a little added touch. Uh anyway, the head out. The, the, oh, by the way, there's two ways they can go. There's the short way, which is instant death, or the long way, which isn't. So they decide to go the long way. Uh, but we, that that way also turns out to be not too good in a moment. They've got to go to the a hotel and climb up onto the roof and then be able to um, you know, get a lay of the land. So they head off uh, down this road. So it's all looking uh, all all destroyed. And uh, Ellie says, um, 
she's she's actually surprised by it. It's the first time she's been out of the quarantine zone. Um, and she she did stories that it's like you know everywhere there's you know, it's crawling with clickers and whatever infected people. Um, but it's not quite like that in some areas. It is, but uh, it's not quite like that everywhere. So. Uh, did it, did it, did it, did it, uh, then what happens next? Oh, I either hear some weird uh, scream or something like that. And say, what was that? Said, well, let's keep moving. So they head to this hotel. When we get there, we go. We get there, and it's all flooded, but it's not deep. So they've got to walk through to get to the stairs. And uh, Ellie finds a body. She starts messing about. There you go. She has a. A bit of a fright with a, a skeleton, there it is, but uh, it's not infected or anything like that. Uh, oh, well, they, they don't think it is. So, anyway, so they carry on. Um, they get up, uh, they go upstairs, they find part of it's collapsed, so um, Tess has to crawl through um, to get to like an apartment where they can go around where this collapsed area, so they do that. Uh, Ellie gets a knife out. Remember, she had a knife last week. She gets that out, starts playing with it. It says, nice knife. They have a little conversation, but it doesn't go very far. They don't really get on yet. Uh, then Tess comes back, lets them through. Uh, by the way, this, this episode is like 50, about 50 minutes long, 52 minutes, including credits. Uh, so it's not as long as last week's. Last week's were an hour and 20, wasn't it? So, a good pilot length. I say I miss the days of a pilot episode being like feature length. But this one's, you know, a regular length episode, 50 minutes. So anyway, so uh, Tess comes back. Uh, so they can get, get round now and uh, they go to their vantage point. And there you go. They can see that there's a lot of uh, infected people writhing about. You see them all writhing. Oh, see, I've gone too far now, look. He's looking down his uh, early. Come on, you bloody thing. <laughs> there you go. You see him all writhing about, look. So they said, they better not go that way, because apparently they weren't there last time that Tess and, um, and Joe were in this area. So he said, the, the must have, somebody must have come through, run inside, you know, for whatever reason, and released all these out. They've chased, you know, the infected have chased them out. So that's how they've ended up outside. So they can't go that way, so they have to go another way. Uh, I think Joel decides that on the museum, they go the museum way, I think. I think that's what they do. Yes, it is. So they have to go over the rooftops a little bit. Apologies if you're giving me tummy gurgling. <laughs> Don't think you'll be able to hear it. Right, so they arrive at the museum. Um, they see that it, there's fungus and stuff growing, but it, it says it's all dry, dry as a bone. Uh, oh, I yes. Earlier, it were we were told that uh, the fungus that grows everywhere, it's all connected, and so it's connected with the infected as well. So that if you step on some fungus a mile away, some infected people will know it and they'll they'll be drawn to you. So. If you don't, um, you should not step on the fungus. But if it's dead, then obviously it's uh, you're okay. Uh, it just makes a noise. It just crackles. So anyway, they go inside and they go upstairs. Uh, they find, oh, they find these dead, um, dead infected. But that's they find um, a squishy dead person, as we'll see. Yeah, there he is. So he's just being got. So he could uh, he could come back to life at any minute or whatever happens with him, I don't know. Or he could just stay dead. I don't know what happens. So, so they've, uh, to go upstairs, all right, Joel, Joel tells her, you've got to be quiet now because, you know, she's always talking. So re seriously, silence now. Um, so they go upstairs and then they, they find that some clickers up there I've got a really tense scene up here now. 
Uh, clickers can't see you, but they can hear you, so you have to be really quiet. Um, as we'll see. There you go, they've got to, got to watch what they're doing now, and we can hear the clickers, you know, making their clicking noises, because it's use it like echolocation. Um, so they have an encounter with them anyway. I think she makes it, she, she breathes or something, breathes a bit loud and it draws the clicker's attention. So I don't know how her breathing is louder than them walking around. I know they're trying to walk quietly, but uh, she didn't breathe particularly loudly. But it draws the clicker's attention, as we'll see. I think, yeah, there you go, she goes <gasps> like that. And it tends and goes for them. So they've got to fight, so they're shooting and shooting them and... Then there's another one, so it's all a desperate uh, fight for survival. They, they split up a little bit. Uh, they're in the museum here, by the way. That's why there's all exhibits and stuff. And um, so they're trying to get past these clickers. Uh, there we go. So here he is with Ellie, uh, and they get uh, oh this clicker. Gets them. I think it actually bites Ellie. I think we see it there. I think it actually bites Ellie. Uh, but they, they get it and they, uh, they shoot it in the in their head. So that's one dealt with. But then there's another clicker comes. Um, oh, their test test catches up with them. I, I thought that thing in background. I thought that was a clicker, but it's just like a, <laughs> a statue or a, some clothing or something. Uh, oh, I've missed it, missed it. There is another clicker, the, the, the dispatch. Uh, she says she's twisted her ankle. Uh, I think we, we learn that, that she's actually been bitten in a bit. So, But anyway, they, they carry on. Uh, she's, she's telling uh, Joel to, uh, you know, look after Ellie. Because she knows she's not going to be around for much longer. Spoilers. Uh, so off they go, heading for the, 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 they find this truck, I think, I think this is, the, is this supposed, to, I think this might be supposed to be the truck that they were wanting the battery for, I think, um, I think it's supposed to be a place where there's people that they know, maybe fireflies, I don't know, I think they are fireflies, where they can get supplies and stuff like that, there's nobody about, so he knows something's up, so he goes and checks, and it kept showing his feet for some reason, and I thought it were something was going to happen, because he kept showing his feet like that. Maybe it was a... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. As he's approaching this truck. But uh, there's nobody about. He finds a dead body on the other side. Uh, opens it up, there's nobody inside. Um, so they've got to go into the building. And they find everybody's dead. Um, apparently, you know, somebody turned... Then there were a, a fight, and they all died. They either were bitten or killed, or you know, they all they all succumbed. Um, so, so they don't know what to do now because I think these were the people that they were supposed to leave Ellie with, but uh, they're all dead. So, Tess says, "Well, Joel's got to take Ellie, and they've got to carry on." Joel just wants to go home, and Tess says, "That's not my home." Um, and this is when she reveals that she's been bitten, she's infected, uh, so she can't go any further. Um, uh, and then some of the the other the people in here they they come round, you know, the infected people they come round, and so that uh, them dealing with them uh, draws more the infected from outside. So. Joel goes and checks in a minute. So he sees that, shows that um, she, she was bitten again, uh, but it's you know it's not doing anything. Remember that chart? We saw a chart in episode one of um, you know the infection rate and think in, it starts you know in your upper body and head and arms or something like. If you if you're bitten, you know you, you turn within you know fifteen minutes or something like that, and it, it works its way down. Um, but she's been, you know, she's fine, you know, she's bitten and she's got marks and stuff, but she's not turning. Uh, whereas, um, um, she's been, I think she's got a, where she said she twisted her ankle, I think she's been bitten there. I think, it's, I think, I think so, anyway, or it might be a, a side, 
it shows it anyway where she's been. Is she going to show it? She's been bitten anyway, so she's going to turn soon. Um, oh, here we go. So the the oh look, the tendrils, the the fungusy tendrils are coming. So they're all going to get up and start. So the deal with them, shoot them. Joe looks out and sees all the others coming. Are you ready? They're going to show it. Or do we just hear it? No, he says they're coming. They're going to be here in a minute. So Tess tips over all these barrels of uh, petrol or whatever it is. And she says she's going to, you know, make make sure that they don't follow Joel and Ellie because she knows she can't go any further. Obviously, Joel's not happy about this. So she says, no, you've got to take her and you've got to get her to that place. So Tess is going to sacrifice herself. She's dead anyway. She's been bitten. She's infected. The name of the episode... So Joel grabs Ellie, drags her off. Ellie's saying, you know, get off me, uh, MF her and all that. Um, but then, then for some weird reason, um, Tessa's lighter <laughs> decides not to work. She's clicking it and clicking it. Look, it's not working. And all the uh, all the infected come, come running in. And then one comes up to her. But it's not. No, it's all very calm because it obviously senses that she's infected, but it's going to come up to it and put the tendrils inside us. This is a bit gross, as you'll see. But then the lighter light, come on, light your thing. I was supposed to see her eyes turn white or something, but they don't. There you go, a lighter lights, she drops it. Oop, and it all goes up, and then we see, uh, go outside, you see Joel and Ellie, oh, there you go. For Pete's sake. <laughs> there we go, Joel and Ellie running out, and then it all explodes, and then we see, you know, burning infected come out. So that's the end of Tess, which is a shame. Um, I can't even remember if Tess were in the game, to be honest. I don't know. But uh, So they've got to head out now and try and find the other, I think the other Firefly camp with the Doctors in, I think. They've got to head out, head west, so that that's, that's what they're about to do. Without Tess. And then I think that's it. That's the end of the episode. Yeah, it is. There you go. So... A really, really good episode. What's happened there? There we go. <laughs> I'm a bit dull alley, didn't it? Uh, yeah, a really good episode, that. I thought it was better than the pilot episode. It was really tense. Uh, you know, we learned a little bit more about the, the infection, or the infestation, I suppose you could call it. Um, how it uh, how it started. Um, oh, well, we also found out that they bombed Boston because there's uh, bomb craters and stuff. And Ellie asks about it, and uh, apparently it worked in some cities, you know, to contain to stop the spread of the infection. And it, it worked in some cities, but not in others. Um, which is probably why they, they could set up the quarantine zone in Boston, you know, so it, it helped halt the the spread. But um, not in all cities, apparently. Um, but yeah, we're really good. Really enjoyed it. Um, Pedro Pascal's, you know, quietly, quietly brilliant, really, as Joel um, is, uh, you know, it's really good. And I did like Tess, you know, she took charge. People say, oh, you know, strong, independent woman and all that. But, um, you know, she wasn't, she wasn't perfect. She got herself bit. So... You know, but she did sacrifice herself for uh, for Ellie and Joel. So I look forward to seeing next week's episode. Have we got a title for next week's episode? Let's have a look. Let's have a look, see if it says... Uh, yes, a uh, long, long time is next week's episode. Um, uh, directed by Peter Haw. Never heard of him. H-O-A-R. <laughs> As in a Haw Frost. <laughs> Not the other. Not the other phonetic... Word. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I look forward to that. So as I, as I said, really enjoyed this episode. Thought we're better than the first one. I'll give this one a nine out of ten. 
Last week's, I give it an eight. This one's getting a nine. It was really good. Um, and it were over and done with in no time. You know, 50 minutes, it went like that for me. Uh, so that shows how good it was, you know. Um, so hopefully it just carries on. I hope it doesn't go to pieces. I hope they haven't, you know, shot their load in the first two episodes. But um, we'll we'll see. But so far, so good. Two two for two. Um, hopefully this is turning out to be another House of the Dragon. You know, that, that just got better and better, didn't it? So hopefully this will, but it started off good. Right, so we'll leave it there. So thanks for watching. Wherever you are in the universe, don't get infected with the fungal disease, not diseases, fungal parasites, and start clicking your way around the world, <laughs> eating people. Uh, look after each other, and until next time, I'll say the...